oh, well, she's not a real leader. She's not making those decisions. But to the contrary, they're quite frustrated with people who are autocratic. And this notion of a personal connection, that we have a desire to really heart to heart connect with, with folks, that stuff that we get from our indigenous brothers and sisters who fully understands what it means to be in community. This notion of clear and decisive communication, a willingness to be transparent is critical. And again, we see this notion of love and compassion for others. And by that, I mean humankind, that everyone has a right to have a life that's filled, as we would say in the United States, the pursuit of happiness. To what degree do folks from different backgrounds and different socioeconomic status have the same opportunities for real, not in words, but for real in our lived experiences? Those are the things we're talking about. So what are some learnings we've developed? First and foremost, that the best leaders include everyone. And so we all should that there's this notion of love and care, but not fear and power. Power is a, I was gonna say a redundant thing as an academic, power is a powerful thing, we don't like that. <laughs> you can't use the word to describe the word. But what we mean by that is, fear is not the way forward. Inclusion is, compassion is. I think it's critically important to be authentic. Now let me be clear. As a U.S. citizen who immigrated here, who came here for this opportunity to lead McEwen School of Business, I actually was authentic. And I actually said to them, what you see is going to show up. So if you don't like that, don't hire me. So you might think that when they hired me, that suggested that's who they wanted. But I will tell you that a good portion of my life here in Canada has been spent answering to people about, I'm not Canadian enough. No, I'm not Canadian enough because I'm not Canadian. And I would submit that when we embrace folks who come from different backgrounds and who come to this country for a variety of reasons, that that is what will make Canada great. That embracing these different perspectives and culture. So it is critical that we don't come here and then assimilate, water ourselves down but that we remain true to ourselves, which isn't to say that we don't learn different cultures. I have. I have embraced Canada. I actually was singing the national anthem because I know those words. But it doesn't mean that I should stop being Wanda Costa. I have to be me, literally. Truth, I'm a West Point graduate where duty on our country is the essence of who we are and what we were taught as leaders. But we find that many people walk the edges and instead of telling truth or seeking truth, just don't lie. That's not the same thing. So what is our truth? How do we build trust? How do we ensure people know what's coming? Being honest. Be decisive. Don't be afraid to ask others for their ideas, their perspectives. How might you deal with a particular situation? Because it's the benefit of all that knowledge that lifts all of us up. And last but not least, of course, we should be embracing technology because it does tear down a lot of barriers. It provides us to have access to information and knowledge and education in ways we did not have in the past. So how do we leverage? How do those of you who are entrepreneurs, how are you, how are you embracing technology to get the word out, to share more openly your, your prominence, your competency, your talents? Leverage that media. Some effective strategies, and this is particular to women. Please, please, please use your voice. Sidebar is a great example of that. Jean is a great, example of that. China is a great example of that. Speak up and speak often. Don't be afraid. Stay true to you. One of the things that I struggle with is all the negativity of the past. Leave it there. Build on it. Stand on it. And use that to build your grit, your perseverance. 
but look forward at what's in front of you, not what's behind you. Don't let the past color your future. Be wise enough to build a personal brand. What do you stand for? Who are you? What makes you unique? But you have to know that first before you share that with other people. Figure out that for yourself. Have the courage to be you, to speak truth to power, to challenge respectfully when you see wrongdoing, to call people out to join you on this journey. Demonstrate courage. This is another difficult one, particularly for women. We're always looking for someone to, to give us a pat on the back, to say that we're awesome. Guess what? That's not going to happen. You have to know fully who you are. You have to know fully what you bring to the table. You have to know fully how you add value. You don't need anybody else to tell you that. You are perfect just as you are. You don't need to become anything but more fully who you are. Don't be afraid of the spotlight. If you're invited to do something, don't say, oh, I surely know, thank you. Oh, I, I don't know that I have anything to offer. Well, if you don't believe you have nothing to offer, why would anybody else? You have to do this. No, 100% you are good enough. You are enough. No more is needed but for you to be you. That simple. Finally, be selfish. And I use that word intentionally because women historically care and take for everybody else and we're last. That doesn't work. And I learned this the hard way in this role right now where I needed to take a massive time out in November because frankly, I was burnt out. And I have a tremendous amount of energy. But I was so busy making sure everybody else had time off, everybody else was taken care of. Nope, I got this. But guess what? Nobody's looking out for Wanda, except for Wanda. And I actually can't be a great leader if I'm not at 100%. And it was a male mentor who's a CEO of a prominent company here in Edmonton who said, Wanda, it's not selfish. If you're going to be the leader, you have to be at your best, which means you must take care of yourself to be your best. So what is it that you need to do to ensure you're at your best peak? So we've got to do that. Take care of ourselves. So finally, as I wrap up here, some closing thoughts I was thinking about today. And this is what I say to myself, just so you know, right? I'm always lamenting how the world is a fair. That's not fair. So what? It's what is. So there's a wonderful book by Byron Katie, happens to be a woman, even though that name sounds male. Byron Katie, and it's called Loving What Is. And what she's talking about is how, I'm gonna confess, I do this. I spend more time talking to myself about, well, it shouldn't be that way, and this is the way it should be, and that's not fair. Who cares? What's important is to embrace, embrace the world as it is and deal with what is, not what should be. Because that's where we get all messed up in our heads. That's where we're all down in the dumps. Face things the way they are and accept them from where they are, and then say, what am I gonna do about it, is the question. BCW is a great association that we at McEwen and myself in particular are proud to be partnered with. The question is, are you leveraging this community and supporting one another? It's very difficult out there for women. Are we lifting each other up or tearing each other down? Women are known to do that, let's call it out. We need to support each other. If we collectively work together, there is nothing that we can't do. If we lift and support each other, there's nothing that cannot be achieved. So support each other. Last but not least, you can see here, I finished reading this amazing book called Untamed. And there are a ton of nuggets in this book. But here are a couple of my favorites that relate to this notion of womanhood and International Women's Day. 
This quote blew my mind. It is highlighted in that book. What we need right now is more women who have detoxed themselves so completely from the world's expectations that they are full of nothing but themselves. Think about that for a minute. That you have so shed all the minutia and dare I say all the stuff, all the crap, all the negativity that the world puts on women, that you've shed all of that and you're left with you, your genuine self. And that is what the world needs our genuine genuine selves fully completely us not who people want us to be not who people are comfortable with but us the good the bad the ugly bring it all of you that's what's needed in the world today the second this one is so powerful it blows my mind a woman who is full of herself knows and trusts herself enough to say and do what must be done stop checking yourself you know what to do go do it you know what to say say it be respectful we're in canada be kind but say it and let the rest burn think about that let it go let it go so that's what i want to share with y'all today I'm happy to take um, any questions if y'all have any. And um, thank you for that opportunity. Merveilleux. Merci beaucoup. Beautiful. Wow. Bravo, Dr. Castan. C'était très inspirant. Et puis, je ne sais pas pour vous, mais moi, je me sens très, très fière d'être une femme aujourd'hui. Yes, mm -hmm. I definitely feel you on that. So, thank you so much for those inspiring words. I could, net, I, I could not be so proud of being a woman yeah. than now. I am so proud. Let it burn. I think that's oh, going to yeah. be my slogan <laughs> for the rest of the year. Okay? Yes. You don't like it, let it burn. It's cool. Exactly. I love it. <laughs>